Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R640 server. In this video we're going to specifically focus on RAID. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R640 server. Do us a favor if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, we'll top in now. This video is going to be specifically dedicated to RAID for your R640 server. We're going to go over the different options. We're going to put up a nice little chart that's going to compare the options as far as the different RAID levels, the cache, if it's hardware or software, uh, the different speeds that you can use, and even more. So we'll show you that first, and then we're going to actually physically install them for you, both the Mini Mono and the PCIe slot. And so we'll show you both versions of them. Now I will say I'm a big fan of the Mini Mono because there's a dedicated port for the Mini Mono so you don't have to waste your PCIe slot to use the PCIe version. Um, and that's huge for the 10 bay by 2 that only has one PCIe slot. You definitely don't want to have to use it for RAID. So you want to utilize that Mini Mono if you can. So let's go ahead and hop in and show you the differences. All right, I have my ESD gear on. We're safe to work with our RAID controller. So the first RAID that we're going to discuss is a software RAID. It is the S140. The S140, of course, isn't featured here because it is a software RAID. It's got RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, and 10. There's no cache. It's 6 gigabit for SATA, and it does not support SAS drives whatsoever. PCIe engine is not available, and it is a software RAID. The first hardware that we're going to feature is right here. It's the HBA330, which is technically not a RAID controller. It's a pass-through, but we like to feature it because you can put this into your Mini Mono. There is no cache. It supports 6 for SATA, 12 for SAS. It is a PCIe 3.0, and it's our first hardware that we're going to feature. The next up is the H330. This is going to be our first real RAID option, our first hardware RAID option. It's 015. 10 and 50, there's no cache, 6 for SATA, 12 for SAS, and it is also a PCIe 3.0 hardware RAID. Next up is one of my personal favorites, it's the H730, 0156, 10, 50, and 60, the 6 and the 60 being the big difference from the H330. It's going to have cache on it, it's our first hardware RAID that does have cache, and it's 1 gigabyte. It's going to be 6 for SATA, 12 for SAS, and it is also a PCIe 3.0 hardware RAID. Next up is the H730P. The H730P is going to be 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, and 60. The big difference from the H730 to the H730P is the cache. There's going to be 2 gigabytes for the cache. It's going to be 6 for SATA, 12 for SAS, PCIe 3.0, and hardware RAID again. Next up is our H740P. The H740P is going to be 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, and 60. The exact same as the H730 and the H730P. The big difference again is the cache. The cache is going to be 8 gigabytes. It's going to be 6 for SATA and 12 for SAS. PCIe 3.1 and it is a hardware RAID. Now at this point before we go to the next one I did want to point out you were noticing that there's mini monos and then the H740P is a PCIe. I did want to point out that you can get mini monos with your H330 or H7, I'm sorry, you can get PCIe slots with your H330, your H730, and your H730P. There is another option that's not a mini mono, and same for your 740P, you can get a mini mono. I just wanted to feature some of the different options, there's a ton of them, uh, so I just wanted to point that out that just because this is in the PCIe form factor doesn't mean that there's not a mini mono. There is a mini mono and vice versa. Just because this is in the mini mono doesn't mean that there isn't a PCIe. Yes, you can use a PCIe depending on what you're looking for. Next up is the H840P. The H840P is a hardware RAID. It's going to be 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, and 60. There's 8 gigabytes for your cache, 6 for SATA, 12 for SAS, and it is also a PCIe 3.1. All right, so now that we've covered some of the different options, we're going to show you how to actually install your RAID controller. And then at the end, we're going to actually configure RAID using our H330, and we're going to configure RAID 5. Let's get going. All right, so I've laid out everything you're going to need. Just a Phillips head screwdriver. We're going to install our Mini Mono, which is an H330. And afterwards, we're going to configure RAID 5 with our H330. But I also put out the uh, H740P, and I switched it to a low profile because the bulk of the 640s, or really all of them, have a low profile slot. Uh, whereas only two of the five different types have a high profile type, which is the uh, four bay and the 10 bay that has two PCIe slots. So you're best off with going with a low profile if you are using the PCIe version, okay? All right, so we're gonna put these to the side. We're gonna pop our latch and we're gonna open this up. 
So it uh, looks like our perk cable is already disconnected, so we don't actually need to unscrew it. So I'll put this to the side. We're going to go ahead and install our mini mono first. So in order to install our mini mono, you need to make sure that your connection is faced this direction. And the first step that we're going to actually do is take our green PCB board and we're actually going to slide it under. There's a couple of little black latches that I don't really call them latches, little pegs kind of stick out and you wanted to get it under there. And then there's the two holes right here that will line up perfectly with your connector so that you can actually screw your perk cable on top of it and physically connect your mini mono. So let's go ahead and slide slide this under. And once you get this under, this will kind of come down almost like a hinge and the two holes will line up perfectly so that now we can line up our perk cable right here, which I will say sometimes you do kind of have to, I don't want to say jam, but push uh, with some pressure the uh, connector to get it into this little black slot right here. And once we have it lined up, we're going to grab our Phillips head and we are just going to go ahead and screw this down and make sure it's nice and tight and all the way in. And once you screw it in, you have officially installed your mini mono. So really it's pretty easy process overall. Only thing you're going to need is your Phillips head and then just make sure you get your PCB board under the black right there. And that's how you would do it. And again, I recommend the mini mono over the PCIe slot just because you save your uh, PCIe slot as a whole for something different. So now I'll show you how to do it with the, uh, the PCIe slot. So you have these two blue tabs right here that you're going to want to go ahead and lift up and then just pull your riser out. And when you pull your riser out, you'll notice you have this dedicated slot right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the blue right here and we're going to take out our current bracket so that we have space for our new card. So what we're going to do is we're going to line up our two connectors and the tip of our bracket will need to go in to this dedicated hole right there. And then we also actually need to pull this blue tab out to just give it a little bit of extra space. So let's go ahead and line everything up. So we got these two lined up and we got the tip lined up. And once you have it lined up, you're just going to simply click it into place. And you can see all the uh, leads are fully in there. And then we're going to take our blue tab and push it back in. And then we're just going to lock it into place. And once you've done that, now you're just going to install your riser back in. And this is how you would install the PCIe version. So again, it's a very uh, pretty simple upgrade as a whole. Just a matter about lining some stuff up, make sure this is nice and flush, and voila, you are done. So now what we're going to do is configure RAID 5 using our H330. Hey guys, it's been with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to configure RAID 5. You're going to want to make sure that you have a RAID controller installed into your server. Scott showed you how to do this beforehand, so go ahead and follow his instructions. And then once you've installed a RAID controller, you can actually go ahead and configure RAID 5. Um, and not just RAID 5, you can configure other RAID levels as well, but specifically in this video, we're going to be going over RAID 5. You also want to make sure that you have a minimum of three drives installed in order to configure RAID 5. Um, this is something that's specific for RAID 5. RAID 0 and RAID 1, they have different minimum drive requirements. So go ahead and research the drive requirements for the desired RAID level that you are looking for, and then just make sure you have that number of drives installed. And if you want to install more than that minimum, then you're more than welcome to. But specifically for this video, you're going to want to need a minimum of three drives plugged into your server. So in order to get started, you want to go ahead and boot up your server. And during post, you want to go ahead and press F2 so we can go into system setup. Once in system setup, go ahead and scroll down to device settings. Once we're in device settings, you want to go ahead and click on the option that represents our RAID controller. And inside of this menu, we can go ahead and click on configuration management. And then we can click on create virtual disk. Once we're in here, we can go ahead and select our RAID level. So like we said earlier, we're going to go ahead and do RAID 5. We're going to leave unconfigured capacity unchecked, and then we're going to select select physical disk. We want to go ahead and change the media type to both, and then apply those changes. 
And then down here, we want to select all three of our drives, and then we want to click Apply Changes. Now we just want to go ahead and click OK. And then we can scroll up and then click Create Virtual Disk, then click Confirm, and then Yes. Then we can just go ahead and click OK again. So really what that was saying was that, hey, if you do this operation, if we create this virtual disk, it'll erase all the data that is on, that, on those drives. So if you're okay with erasing the data that's on these drives or those drives have no data at all, then you're all good to create the virtual disk. Now once that's done loading, there's only one step I like to take just so I can make sure that everything was done properly and that creating this virtual disk did indeed work. So we wanna go back to that main menu and then go to virtual disk management. And here we can see where it says virtual disk zero, RAID five. So this is that RAID five array that we just created. So as you can see, it did indeed work and we have successfully configured RAID five. If you found this video useful, go ahead and leave a like and smash the subscribe. And if you're interested in purchasing a custom built server, whether it's Dell, HP, Supermicro, Cisco, um, we have plenty in stock. We also have AMD Ryzen servers, AMD Epic servers, Intel Xeon scalable servers. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Take care, guys.